It's an emergency build. We've got to do a quick turnaround on two shafts, two heads. We're going to show you how it goes, how we do it here. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Golf Shop. Jim McCleary here, and this is my golf channel. We're talking about golf club reviews, golf club repairs and golf club fittings all so your scores can go low. If you would like subscribe, hit that stuff across the bottom and that way more of this information gets out to the YouTube universe. Tell your friends, your family, have some fun with this. As you can tell, I am. <laughs> we also have a, uh, we have a live stream on Mondays. It's called What's in My Drawers Golf Talk and it's about what's in the drawers in the shop and we talk about the same stuff. It's a one-on-one -on -one shotgun kind of thing. We talk about topics. It is a very good hour to hour and a half, okay? And join us, you'll have some fun. So what's the emergency? Ed Shepard is from Woodstock, Georgia. All right, Woodstock, Georgia. And he is a very, 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 very good instructor. And he has a very strong clientele base of which this is a young golfer that goes to Southern Georgia. And uh, he was playing with this Titleist uh, TSI 3 with a Ventus Black TR S6. All right, there. All right, that's a whole lot of words. All right, Ventus TR, that means the tour. It means no matter what this is going to be, the TR means it's going to be stout in this particular area. The whole, the whole profile is going to be stout. And then it's a 6S, so in that 60 gram X Flex range. Well, he didn't like that. He apparently is a Taylor Made fan. And we have something new, which is really kind of unique. I like this look. It is a TaylorMade Stealth 2, and it is the uh, Team USA build, right? If you can't tell by that, it's the Team USA. It's, you know, you got the red on the outside right here. You have the blue right here, and then you have the typical white right there. And then the carbon is on top is also blue. And the bottom here is also blue. Okay, so what's different on this one? We're just going to go over it real quick because we really do have to change these out. All right, so I have hardly had any Stealth 2s in the shop as of late. I've had plenty of Stealths because they've been face issues or changing out shafts. This one, not so much. So we got USA on the face. It's a carbon face, standard tailor-made insert or uh, adapter. In this particular one, you have your weight set here, but there's also one right here. Now this one right here, if you were looking at it, is one that would lead me to believe that it's one that wants you to do that. That's normally when they put them down there. Now if it's down there as a decorative item and it's only two grams, it's really not going to do much. Plus you also have what they, what are they going to call it now? It is called the speed pocket, all right? Basically a speed pocket. And what that does, it allows the face to go like this and, and expand back out. All right, it has the Ventus 5S in it, and it's the Ventus Red, all right? The Ventus Red 5S, so it's about a 50 gram S flex shaft. If you're looking in the TR and an X, this thing is just not going to do, all right? Now, the Red is a very stout shaft, to be sure. If you're a late releaser, you know, you, this thing you could live with all day long. The Ventus Blue, which is very, very popular, just a hair friendlier, I think, all right? Just a hair friendlier. So... We have a tailor-made and we have a Titleist. Certainly two different kinds of shafts, two different kinds of clubs. Now, what do you got to do? Well, number one, we have a series of instructions that we want to do. He wants me to spine and flow this one because if we look, it already has a pure sticker on it. So I'm pretty much in the right area already, meaning logo down. And then the other part is, you know, removing the adapter is not going to be a big deal. However, they both have separate specific ferrules, right? The, the TS, TaylorMade, has always had a specific ferrule that goes right in here. As you can see, about half inch to five eighths inch long. It will have a very, very small, very small shoulder, but it goes in there to hold the club in place. The TaylorMade, on the other hand, has an almost non-existent ferrule, but it's important because it's more shoulder than it is ferrule. It, okay, it's more shoulder than it is ferrule, and they're both unique to their particular brand. So we, number one, you got to make sure you have those. 
You say, oh, Jim, you can, you can, you know, recover these. Well, not, you probably could, but that's a lot of work for that thing. And it's very, very small. And the odds are with you that, yeah, you're going to destroy it. And for the speed that we need, that, that's extra time that I don't need to be spending on doing that. On this one, yeah, you could probably do that, but I go through a lot of these and I have a lot in store. So I've got them both. We're ready to go. Let's go change out some shafts. Okay, first things first is we got to take them apart. Got to have a wrench. Now, most of the wrenches that you'll use will all fit. There's been some speculation that these are, you know, turn it, they're break loose torque wrenches is basically what they are. And there's speculation that they're all a little different. And they very well may be, since they're mass produced and stuff like that. Are they so far off that it would be bad? Could you use one and the other? Hmm, I'd say you could. Uh, I would recommend using the manufacturer's wrench just to be sure. But we're taking them off, so it's not a big deal. Alrighty. So, the thing I would look for here is, is the usage. If you look at this, there's a little bit of it's dull. I don't know if it's made to be dull because everything is shiny up there. The top of this head looks just fine. So I'm going to try and shine this bottom up before we do a reinstall. Now on the Titleist, the Titleist, the top of the head is in pretty good shape. There's a couple of smudges. We're going to take care of that. And then the bottom has been used and we're going to just try and make it shinier so it'll look better when it goes back. Okay. Got that covered. We can do that here while the clubs are drying. So how do I remove this? <clears throat> well, the uh, very, very easy way <laughs> is really what it's about. What I use is, uh, it is a little system from Golf Works and it's nothing more than a, than a shoulder screw, looks like, like that, with a washer that looks a lot like that. Now, they come in different. Now, we do know that these these screws that go in here are different sizes. We know that. So the first thing we got to do is find the right one to fit. And I just happen to know, and they come color coded. So what you do is you get a screw with a black head on it. A screw with a blue head on it. A screw with a silver head on it with a yellow head on it. See if you can see that, there you go. And another one with a red one, all right? And you get a, and you get the washer. Now, so far so good, I have not run any adapters I can't pull with this one. Why do I do it like this? Because I can heat up the ferrule, I can heat up the adapter, I can pull it all out in one shot if necessary. What I mean by that is I can pull it out and not mess with the ferrule. Sometimes if you don't want to mess with the ferrule, and what I mean by that is scraping the adapter or scraping the shaft, when, it's, when the adapter's off, you can just push the thing off. You'll see here in just a second. So that's what we're getting ready to do. So from a tailor-made point of view, what we're going to do is we're just going to go up, because the tailor-made glue uh, loses its bind fairly easy. We're going to go real quick. about 45 seconds. Now when I put it into my machine, I need to pull it back some so that it will, there it starts right there. There we go. It gets in there and then we start pulling. heat then. Apparently it doesn't want to give up. There we go. Apparently I needed to go the old-fashioned route. Okay, see how it's broken loose? There we go. Keep going. There we go. Alrighty. So now here's a couple of tricks. We're going to we got to move quick and try and take this off. 
All right. So we just want to push it forward and we can take that off. There we go. And here's the reason why I'm showing you. So if you go to move it with these colored shafts, they can have a tendency to pull some paint. And if it's way up there or you scrape it up here, you've, it's, it's ugly. All right, so quick. So we scraped it off. I'm going to clean it up just a little bit. There we go. Just a touch. And then what I want to do is I want to take it out of here. Of course, this thing's going to be warm. All I'm doing is putting it back in because I need to clean it and this is just the easiest way to clean it out. Alrighty, now what I'm going to use is a, a hosel brush and we're going to clean this out. I'll be right back. I right, came back with it. There's a little stubborn little piece of glue on the bottom, so I had to use a little bit of a drill. Got it all cleaned out. If you can see, there's a nice silver underneath there. And while I had it in there, I took it and I actually shined it up. I couldn't stand it anymore. As you can see, there it is. So we're good to go with the head. We just need to use the other shaft. So that one's done. Now we need the, here we go, the, the Titleist. Now we used and here's the reason why this kit comes so handy. This is the other one. And that thing just falls straight in there. So this screw is not correct. I believe it is. I believe it's the silver one. Just test it to make sure it goes in really smooth. And it does. Yay. So now we put it through the through the washer. And away we go. Now is this an absolute necessary thing to have? No, it's not. Uh, I just think it is so much easier to use. Uh, you could just pull this, you know, heat all this or heat this ferrule up, pull it down and just pull it off like anything else. You could do that. All right. I would suggest still pulling it out of the head because the head's going to protect this. This is a piece of aluminum. This aluminum takes heat really easy. That's the reason why these things come off so well. But if it's in the head, you've got three, you got an air layer, the metal layer and then the layer that's around it because it's it's not a solid piece if there's air in there so you got to do it like this so i just like doing that all right let's set this up again all righty now this one is a little different in that it's got a cog all right it's got a cog and so what we're going to do we're going to heat it up in here we're going to slide this down heat this area up so that it'll want to remove from there and then we'll pull it. So here we go again. better in this one by taking off the ferrule and still using this thing and not having to uh, clean it out more yeah there's several different ways to get to the end of this thing but this to me is just the fastest and the cleanest and this one pulls right out all right there we go 
and there we go with that one. Alrighty, now this one had a special instruction for the cog when I go to put it back in. So as I'm taking this thing off, I'm going to go read it and we'll put it back together and clean it up. Okay. So you want an A4, and that is, I believe that's just standard, so here we go. And there's that hot thing, we got to get this thing all the way down. All right, now let me go clean this one out, and then we'll get moving. All right, got that all cleaned out. Now you notice it's not real silver in there, there's a lot of black. These are very heavy duty uh, adapters, right? And they do a very good job. The real trick here is to make sure that they're all clean all the way around the top because sometimes that glue gets out of there. I got it set here, I got it tightened down, and I cleaned up the top, which you know was already good, but I just took out some of the smudges, and then the bottom is looking a little bit better too. All right, so now we got to do the the put the assembly part. That was the disassembly, not too bad, right? Now we got to assemble them. He wants fl uh, spine and flow on both of these, so we got to go over to this other, my other bench, and I got to take the grips off, and then we got to get started. So we're going over there. <clears throat> All right, Mrs. McGough helped me with the grips, and she uh, took this one off, uh, and she's cleaned up the other one. The other thing we have to remember when we go to put this together, and when we're doing shaft pulls, is that normally the glue will come into the tip section, and it fills this area up, and it all depends on how much glue was used. Normally what that does is you can tell the bottom end of the tip will just be one solid mass of whatever's on there. So you got to clean that off and you got to drill a bit of a hole out of here. Why is that? You'll see here in a minute. So anyway, spine and flow. We're not doing anything with the frequency because it's already where it's at with as far as trimming and all the other things because we're just doing a shaft change. So a little bit of uh, fishing line. There we go. Now, this thing was already pured once before. And if you can see, that's where the peering sticker's at. And the pure folks and I normally agree with where it's gotta go, but every once in a while we get about, four, uh, we get about 90 degrees off. So, we're gonna try this first and see what happens. And I'm gonna get a frequency here in a minute. All right. I was just right in the middle of another build. Okay, I suffered with not being able to find my clip, but I found it. So here we go. I've got the laser in, and I've got it in where they would say you would want it to be. And look at that bad boy. Right on the money. Spine and flow. All right, so let's see what it really comes out to be. Ooh. 273. Wahoo! That is a whole lot at 44 and a half. That's what he was looking for. All right, 272. Well, this one's 44 and a half too. 44 and a half, 272 is in that very stiff range. So here we go. So, what we want to do to make sure it's going into the right spot is I have the standard loft and I'm just going to put a line on the shaft right up where it's at so we know where to go. Okay, next one. <clears throat> now this one's a little different in that I don't get any I don't get any cheaters and uh, so we're going to start just like the other one we're going to go logo down and we're going to try to see if we can get lucky on the first try. Now normally what I would do is I would Straight over here, uh, find the spine, and that would help me out. But I'm gonna if I'm going for luck since we're going for speed. All right, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, that's already in there. It's in there good, so we don't even need to do too much with that. Let's get that in there. Well, right now it's just the flow. Okay, let's see how we did. Wow, horrible. <laughs> we do not like that. 
Let's see what happens here. There we go. Found it. Look at that bad boy go. Okay, got that one. How far off the bottom was it? Well, not too bad. A little bit to the inside. All right, let's make a mark here. I'm gonna, so we got them flared out. We got them put them together so we can use the glue so it can get going so we can get them shipped out in the morning. So let's go back to the other table. All right, so we got everything where we want it to be. We got everything polished. We got everything set on the adapters where we want them to be. We've got everything flowed. We got everything matched up. Now the real trick here is to get them put together and make them look good. So we're gonna be using the, the 3M DP 810 which is the stuff you see them use on the tour. And it is very fast dry. So I want to start off with putting this stuff in first so that it gets incorporated. Just a little bit different than I would normally do, but it's all right. All right, so I got everything set up because speed is of the importance here. Got to mix it up for about a minute. got her done. So now the first thing we do is get the shaft with just a little thin layer of glue. What that allows is the ferrule to slide on. There you go. And you want to be careful. You don't want to ever get any of this stuff on you and start handling the painted surfaces because you'll just leave fingerprints. We don't want to do that. All right, we got that on there as a depth. We got it on the shaft in order to put in. Now you'll see some people use uh, the like tongue depressors, uh, popsicle sticks, uh, screwdrivers in order to get the stuff in there and then shove the shaft in there. I think the, the shaft does a fine job. Look in there and make sure you got glue all over it because this young man is going to be swinging hard. I'll put the rest of that glue in there. There we go. Now I line the standard with my line. Tap it in. There you go. You heard the, heard the change in sound, meaning it, it actually made it to the bottom. You wipe it off. There we go. Push it in there, I'm gonna make sure because the last thing I want to do is fight this. There we go, we got a little bit more. Alrighty, tape on it. On the shelf it goes. Now this will be dry in just about 15 minutes. So we got to get with this one now. Same thing, a little bit on the shaft. There we go. Slide that on. Slide this on here. There we go. I think we're going to go a little bit deeper. There we go. Oh yeah. Get some glue on that one. There we go. Get it in the club. Now what are you not seeing right here because I just held it from you, but the uh, this one bubbled up a little bit on me because of the air escaping. Make sure we got all kinds in there, and we do. Line that up, A4. There we go. Alrighty. What I'm looking for here is fit and finish. Make sure that these things have been off center on me a couple of times. I think we got it. Make it so it won't move. And now as a bonus one, I've had this ping sitting here that I did a shaft removal on. And we're just trading ahead. We're pulling this out of a tailor made and putting it into a ping. So we're just all over the map today with different drivers. And there they are. 
all righty so in about 15 minutes we're going to be ready to go and we'll finish them up and we'll send them tomorrow morning so this is the hard this is the quick spot if i want to wait 15 minutes turn around uh, put the grip on them we can however we now have time it's six o'clock at night and we're going to wait for the morning so join me then all right it's the next day and what i did is i went back and i inspected my work and found out that one of the ferrules slipped on the Titleist Club. So I had to disassemble it and put it back together very, very quickly. And since I'm using the tour glue and it normally sets within like 15 minutes, I had to do that. And while I was doing it, I fixed a few other clubs. I've got another M4 and a Mizuno head that I had to work with. So, you know, good for me. Alrighty, so here we go. I got her all done. And so what, I, what do you have to do here? So what we had to do is uh, we had to shape the ferrule for the Titleist. And we had to, then we wiped down both clubs with acetone in order to take off all the marks I put on them and shine up the ferrules. And then I uh, shined up the ferrules with the uh, buffing wheel. And we take it over to the other bench and we started putting on the grips. Now on the Titleist Club, he wanted two extra grips on that, or two extra layers of tape on that. And putting extra two extra layers on there, all you have to do is you put one on one side, you rotate 180 degrees, put the other one on, put the other tape on, slide it on, and we are done. With the other one, the uh, golfer did not want any extra tape, and when I got it, I believe it was logo down. So that's what he's getting is logo down. Okay, and as here at the very end of it right here is what I like to do with a lot, if not all of my repairs and all of my builds, is to give it a nice coat of paint, or coat of wax, coat of paint, right, coat of wax, and they're like, well, what do you do that for? Well, the only reason why I do it is it gives it a little bit extra shine, and it gives it a little bit of extra protection, just like cleaning your car, right? Will it wear off? Yes, but it's a good look when you first get it. And uh, so that's what we're doing. All righty, so that's what we're doing. We uh, have the emergency build. We had to switch the shafts, so we showed you how to pull the adapters. We showed you the differences in the ferrules that go on it. We showed you a little bit of spining and flowing. We showed you making it to length and putting on some grips. And that's pretty quick, right? And if I look at it, I've probably got about an hour invested in this because of the super fast glue that I'm using. And it's the same stuff they use on the tour. So now we've, uh, we've already called the customer. It's in Woodstock. If you want to check him out, his name is Ed Shepard. One heck of a teacher. And, and they're going to be going out today and hopefully in the golfer's bags at least by Saturday if at the latest Monday. So if you got any questions on what the TRs are, oh, there's another thing, the Ventus. What was going on with the Ventus shafts? All right, the Ventus red, unlike what I was talking about, is the higher launching of all of them. So it goes red, high launch, blue, mid launch, black, low launch. So you had a red S in there and they all have very, very, very stiff butt sections. And that is a characteristic of Fujikura. All right, that's not a problem. The rest of it is what happens is, is that he went from a red soft profile to a black very, very, very stout profile. And, that, and what we saw was that the black's a little heavier in the TR versus the red. The profile is much more stiff in the black than it is in the red. And the torque is significantly lower in the black than it is in the red. So if he's a college golfer and he's swinging at tour level speeds or putting any kind of load on it, He's going to love the black over the red. And I can see why now we're wanting to switch it. All right, so now, if you got any questions, put them in the show notes below. And as always, don't forget about the live stream on Monday, 1730 uh, Eastern. And let's see your scores. Go low.